Hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick. We're playing Stationeers. Now today we're going to be running a bit of an experiment. We've got some new toys with our update, so uh, let's see what we can do with them. So the plan is we've got uh, some water. We're going. We've got our new plants there. These are our winter spawn. They take the water, turn it into hydrogen oxygen, which we can then feed to a hydrogen combustor. It will take that hydrogen oxygen and turn it back into water and the water goes to the plant and etc circle of life but in the process of doing that that produces cold and this produces heat so sitting in between them both we're going to see if we can run a, a sterling engine and if that all works well we get profit um, so let's see how we go now I'm on Mars, these ones do apparently consume nitrogen uh, because nitrogen turns into hydrogen oxygen. Yay chemistry. Uh, but um, we're on Mars, so we do have nitrogen in the atmosphere. It is 3% nitrogen. So hopefully that's going to be enough to power the whole process and that will be the only outside source we need. So hopefully, if we do it right, uh, the plant will produce enough hydrogen oxygen from the water, which will then burn back into the water of the same amount. And the nitrogen will be the only thing we need to bring in. And uh, hopefully we end up with power. But uh, I don't know what ratios we'll need or how many plants we'll need to cool it or what it is. But um, I guess we shall need a greenhouse to grow the stuff in. Uh, probably put this will be producing heat so I'll probably plant all the plants in the same room as the generator which will then have to extract all the oxygen and hydrogen before it becomes explosive feed it into that thing which will probably have to be in another room where I can gather the heat and feed it back into here uh, so I guess I shall need a couple of sealed rooms and some airlocks okay so that's a plants growing side of it now I have to do something with this so I've got it hooked up it's just going to be pumping direct hot water into there I guess the machine itself does produce heat so I might enclose that in a box and anything that comes out of here of course I'm actually going to put it into a tank and not just vent it out so I shall grab a tank and a heap more pipes and um, I'll capture it. I may not have to filter it because this one can, uh, since a couple of updates ago, they put an output port on it there. So we can put dirty gases into there and uh, maybe whatever's left will just come out of there a bit hotter and that will be part of our heating. Okay, let's, as a test, instead of just trying to pump it out of there, can I, because the temperature is getting colder in there, I don't really have a source of gas coming in so maybe if I just suck gas out of there and then where do I get it from or I just suck the hydrogen out if I put a filter on there and just suck out the hydrogen and oxygen um, will that work I need to be able to get the gas out of there somehow if it's getting colder it's not building up pressure so it's got to build up pressure from the heat of that and I need to get more gas because I'm pulling gas out of there or do I just blow the excess gas out of here back into there ah, I don't know this is getting complicated um, I'll just suck the gas out of there and see if I can burn it uh, and I might just have to put this one on just to try and maintain pressure in there even if it's sucking gas in from outside okay all well, my plants are dead but I now have a pipe just directly into that room there so can I actually combust hydrogen straight out of this um, hydrogen having there's two percent hydrogen two percent oxygen uh, at 46 kilopascals we have 13 moles of H2O and we're getting heat and we suck that dry 
Wow, that actually pulls a lot of gas out of there faster than it recharges from the pipe. So now that excess gas is stored in here, is it? At 139 degrees. So that excess gas will be what comes out of this pipe here. And that's what I'll have to feed into the generator. And what does the generator do with that gas? Um, so it's got to cool it down before feeding it back in here. Otherwise that room's going to cook. Um, maybe I can feed it into one side. And will that cool it down enough? Um, oh, I better grab some hydrogen. Yes, we'll do that. Uh, well, we'll give it a try and we'll see what happens. There we go, the exhaust from that one is now hooked into the generator. Although this is not insulated, it is going down in temperature, so I may have to enclose that in a room to keep it warm so as I'm not losing uh, any heat to the Martian air. Right, so this is just sucking all the atmosphere out of there if I'm running it, sucking everything out. And... Um, everything that's in that pipe, although it's coming out hot, I think I'm getting a lot of the original gases from here mixed into it, so it's not coming out as hot as I'd like it to be. So if I just filter out just the oxygen and hydrogen out of here, send it to the oxygen combustor, it should burn hotter, and insulated pipes, maybe some radiators on the pipes, water pipes in there to heat up the room and possibly a vent sucking the hot air out of the room. Okay, almost 500 watts. That's the solar panel's worth and it's dropping rapidly. Okay. Uh, pressure in there is going right down. Right. If I just keep the nitrogen and carbon dioxide, I'll take out the pollutant as well. So I'll hook it up with a filter in, with a filter for a carbon dioxide and a nitrogen, and everything else will go to the waste, go to here, which we all the hydrogen error then. Right, carbon dioxide, nitrogen. Let's get some power onto this thing. Of course, this is going to add more overhead to my power, uh, which of the 300 watts that I'm currently getting out of it, this might not be worth it. Now, if I switch you on, we should have just the hydrogen. Oh, I have to be careful that doesn't become explosive. because that is an explosive mix I've got in there. So now if I switch you on, that becomes very hot indeed. If I switch you on, I'm still only getting 500 watts. I've got 1000 degrees in there. Or is it that one's not very hot? That one's not very hot. Uh, so what have we got in that pipe, by the way? That should be a probably 1,000 degree water as well, 540. Okay, so if I put a heat exchanger between the water pipe and the gas pipe coming out of it, is that where I'm going to get my heat from? Where are you going? Liquids on that side, gas is on this side, that is correct. Right, so I'm going to switch you on, I should drain out that, which it is, uh, you're 300 degrees, if I switch you back on again, you're now going up rather quickly, right, switch you on, now getting 2 kilowatts, that should keep my plants happy,
Is that, is that going? I should be able to switch you on. And that will be very, very hot. We should be heating you up. Yes, it is. My plant should now be happy because I've got rid of all the hydrogen. They are happy indeed. Even though it's minus 106 degrees. Well, they're, they're not dying because of the temperature now. It's minus 106 degrees. So, um, why were they dying earlier? So, what's that? Uh, uh, 10, 20, 30, 35 plants in there, thereabouts. And that's not enough to keep up with the generator. But the gas they're producing is being filtered out, burned. The water, heat from the water has been going through the heat exchanger, put it into the gas, through the generator and back out into the room. And that is getting very close to being stable with an energy surplus. I think that is a viable power source. Five kilowatts. Yeah, it's heating up rather quickly now at 50, 50 kilopascals. Might be worth changing that one back up to 100. It's now disconnected from the base power it is on its own it is running off the battery battery is being charged by the sterling generator i have a vent to relieve over pressure here it's keeping it at 100 kilopascals inside the room i have my waste tank there which is probably not strictly all that necessary So it's only gaining a small amount of pressure there. You could probably get away with not having it and just use the length of the pipe. Um, but we have, once again, the heat exchanger getting the heat from the water, the hydrogen combustor creating the water, which of course comes out very hot. We extract the heat from that. We use the water to grow the plants. The plants create the cold. And if we switch it on, also great gaining nitrogen from the atmosphere in Mars. It's got enough to keep the plants growing and we are getting almost eight kilowatts. Okay, a bit more experimenting. I have actually just turned the turned the uh, the pipe around. So the pipe coming out of the the uh, Stirling engine is not dumping gas straight into the room. It is now circulating it back around and into the tank. Um, so our tank once again, it's not really gaining much much pressure because we're only taking the hydrogen out, combusting most of that to water, gaining the getting the heat out of the water. So that is heating up quite nicely as it's just going. The room is cooling down. Now if I switch it on, the room is only going up very slowly. So you don't need a heap more plants in there. You don't need a huge greenhouse. But we are getting 8 kilowatts. That machine is now running at its maximum power and it is charging the battery. It is all power positive. Temperature in there is only very slowly going down. So you could, a few more plants, you could run that one indefinitely. That is a future power source. Run it off the plants, that is pretty cool. Full power, you could either plant more plants, put in another generator if you wanted. Winter spawn, that's cool. And they glow in the dark. All the radiation, the high, the high energy neutrons being emitted from, from cha changing the, uh, the nitrogen into um, hydrogen and oxygen. Shield your testicles, everyone. Don't have kids. 
And with these winter spawn, look at these temperatures you're getting. You could actually use this system. Instead of powering a generator, you could actually fire a furnace on that just from the gas created from the plants. Okay, here we are a bit later with a bit of rebalancing. I have enlarged. My greenhouse is now a 3x3. Three three. I have two sterling generators in there. And as we see here, they are both putting out max power at 8 kilowatts. So this little base here, this little generator here, is putting out 16 kilowatts. My entire base uses about 14 kilowatts. And that will be putting out 16 kilowatts 24-7, day or night. Now it is very slowly ticking up in temperature there, so I still need a few more plants in there to balance it off. But the temperature in the waste tank is actually going up now. And that's using power, it is going up in temperature. So I'm generating additional uh, gas, so I can either use the gas for something else I need, or I can use the heat for something else I need. So I can run that to a furnace now and start smelting stuff with that excess heat. Uh, it's 1200 degrees. It is very much hot enough to do a lot of the smelting. Um, as I say it's still ticking up, so I need to squeeze a few more plants in there yet. If I switch off one of the engines there, it'll start going down again. But it can continuously power one engine, 8 kilowatts, a few more plants. It could power two of them there, or more. Um, Right, so what I figured out there, it's tricky to get the plants not to kill themselves with all the with all the uh, CO2 in there and with all the hydrogen in there, I mean, and make sure they get enough nitrogen. Uh, because I'm on Mars here, I have nitrogen in the atmosphere. I don't need a filtered supply, so I just have this one set to try and pressurise the room to 110 kilopascals and a vent on the other side trying to reduce the pressure to 100 kilopascals, so it's always got a flow through of gas in there. It's always replenishing what's in there, so none of it goes stale. It always has a fresh supply of nitrogen coming in. I have vents all around, all around the corners of the, the room. That is to suck out the hydrogen, so they are just hooked up to the vent. Once again, it is circular link, so it's not blowing from one side of the room to the other, creating a massive gale. Uh, so that'll link them all up. It is just returning the CO2 and the nitrogen back into the room uh, while everything that is not that, which will be the hydrogen, oxygen, pollutant, all goes to the burner. Um, now from that it creates hot water and any leftover gas comes out hot as well. Uses a heat exchanger to take the heat from the water into the gas. That's where you want your tank. I was a bit confused on what the tank was, but you want that pressurised because that stores all your heat. Uh, and that's what's going up in temperature at the moment. So if you've got a couple of megapascals in there, that will help you out a lot. And um, as I say, there it is. It's stable. It's generating constant power uh, from the winter spawn. Uh, there you go. That is entirely self-sufficient and plenty to spare because yeah, we have the whole thing running out um, I have my tools with me there we go 620 watts 620 720 watts and that once again switch it all on let's try so 620 720 watts and it is producing 16 kilowatts so that is a 15 and a bit kilowatts of surplus power. Um, so, plant power, yay! You can work with nature and not burn all that coal anymore. Um, but anyway, that works. Um, might be a bit overpowered. This provides, say with one of them there, that provides all the coal you're going to need. It'll provide all the power you're going to need. Uh, there is nitrogen on Venus, so Venus suddenly got a hell of a lot easier. If you can get hold of these, that's the way to do it. Till next time, happy building. See ya!